Hey everybody, Radom here. Thanks for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program. So last we left off, we were planning on uh, grabbing this asteroid here. And uh, what I just got to say before I even start is, I don't know whether it's because I enabled the Breaking Grounds mod partway through this series or not, uh, but I had to go through my missions of Deployed Science and kill all of the Deployed Science I had on uh, the Moon, Minmus, and Duna because they were generating so many screen messages that my big game became um, quite unplayable. I, uh, I tried to record uh, this episode twice already and the amount of unnecessary screen message lag that I generated from... All of the deployed uh, experiment controls uh, basically locked up my CPU because I was getting a few every second. Uh, kind of like this here. But imagine that times like six because I had six deployed. So my question to you all is, uh, is this something that happens to you? Yeah, as you can see, I just got 15. I'm right clicking them as fast as they're creating. Oh, uh, 35. See, the problem here is I would normally have just uh, destroyed the um, uh, the controls here, right? But I have a mission to do goo observation on Ike. I think, actually, at this point, I'm just going to terminate my goo mission. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate how unbelievably ridiculous and somewhat frustrating the deployables are. And again, not sure if it's because... Um, I enabled this partway through. I do know that enabling it partway through, uh, enabling it partway through made the first goo mission break, but then everything started working thereafter. So I don't know if, um, I'm just gonna, uh, cancel this contract because it's, it's literally not doable. Um, so as I said, I'm not sure if, uh, yeah, I, I really don't know what's going on. Um, so if you all have sort of more insight as to why the Breaking Grounds mod is breaking my computer, I'd love to hear it. So the next thing I'm going to do is accelerate time to the Kerbin Encounter, now without the Deployed Science spammage, uh, which is, oh, so much better. And to everyone that thinks I forgot about the uh, ast astronaut or Kerbinaut that was heading to Moho, I haven't. She's just not in a good transfer window uh, for time. So now the asteroid is on its way to Kerbin. Actually, it's on its way to smash Kerbin, as you can see here. So what we got to do is fly our RHD asteroid grabber. And I had another worry. The worry is that uh, there is a distinct possibility... The uh, grabber arms don't really work with robotics, and I don't have a fallback plan if that is the case, but we'll see what we could do. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is create a maneuver, and this is going to cost a whole lot of um, fuel, and I have precious little left, um, to create a maneuver that allows me to intercept the asteroid there we go. That's going to be the maneuver. Uh, thereabouts. Come on. I really hate when the intercepts disappear like this. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to take it on good faith that that maneuver gets me there. And then we're going to do this wobbly flat bike tire uh, time warp here. Uh, that uh, brings us to that maneuver. The reason why is because at low orbit, I can only accelerate up to times 1,000, and then I can do times 10,000 when I'm in higher orbit. So it's... Um, it's like whiplash between those two. Now the issue with this um, asteroid is it is on a collision course, which means it's... I normally when it's just on a pot pass you have a full arc incoming and outgoing to grab it here I only have half of the path right because it's actually physically going to collide with Kerbin uh, which means I don't get two chances I just get the one 
So I just uh, turned on my RCS fuel to align myself correctly, reminding myself that I have about 3K Delta V and I'm using 66.6 .6 of it. Oh boy, this is the end times asteroid, isn't it? All right, I'm going to very slowly do this transfer burn uh, until I hit the node. I'm just so that I can uh, be able to control this craft. Because I didn't asparagus, asparagus stage, I kind of just threw this thing into orbit. It honestly does not have a whole lot of fuel left, which is, uh, yeah, it's a problem, I guess. I'm just micro adjustments here. All right, so my intersect here is six kilometers. Uh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and warp ahead. And then what I got to do is basically killing my momentum so that, uh, well, I should do it when I'm even closer. So I'm going to warp even further into the future. Killing my momentum so that I can actually grab this thing because uh, within 20 minutes or so it hits Kerbin. So I'm going to use. I'm going to try to do this the best I can. So the speed difference between me and the ast uh, asteroid is about a thousand, which means I have about a thousand delta V to burn. But another thing is that um, I need to get closer to it. So what I'm trying to do is burn off any difference in speed so that my intersect is closer. And as you can see, the separation is collapsing. So I'm going to try to s collapse the separation as best as I can. Eyeballing it. Alright, 1.5 is pretty good. And I'm going to warp a minute into the future. So in T minus one minute, we're going to pass one another. So. Now I'm trying to. Separation of 200 meters. All right. My RCS is like honestly just throwing me more off course. Stupid RCS than anything else. All right, uh, we should be able to, yep, there it is. We can physically see the asteroid now. So this is like kind of a high stakes rendezvous, a high stakes docking, if you will. And what I'm trying to do is remove the speed difference between these two objects as best as I can with this clunky, clunky, hard to maneuver ship. Now the speed difference between us is only uh, a track sprinter's sprint amount. The constant change of camera focus because I'm on a collision course is honestly obnoxious. Just gonna say it as it is. Alright, so now uh, there's a speed difference of 2 meters per second, and I can have an ETA till crash, which is about 10 minutes. So I have 10 minutes to dock this baby. It is high stakes, isn't it? 
Um, so, the next thing is, I want to cut any horizontal velocities difference, so that the asteroid is heading towards me. Uh, so let me overshoot it like this. And again, go back and overshoot it on the other side. And let's arm all of these here. And we'll keep them nice and flat. I'm a little worried that the robotics parts won't really allow for effective grabbing. Um, and that this mission will be a bust. Not for lack of effort, though. Alright, let's actually go into docking mode and... Why are you rotating? I told SAS to turn off. Thank you. There. Now back to staging. Uh, now this asteroid is literally on a collision course with the ship. Uh, it's basically heading straight for us. And I'm going to head straight for it. Now one thing I can say is... Let me set my target extension all the way up. One thing I can say about uh, asteroid grabbing is don't do it at super, super, super low speed. The grabbers don't work very well at uh, ridiculously low speed. They work better actually uh, under speed. Um, so, yes. I'm having... Come on, rotate. Oh my goodness. This ship is dumb. I have plenty of electric charge. I have inline reaction wheels, and it just won't rotate, will it? All right, so ETA to Kablamo is seven minutes. I've wasted three minutes of my time just trying to fight this cumbersome, lumbering craft. The problem is, if I use RCS, uh, what ends up happening is it actually changes some stuff. I don't even know what I'm staging at this point. Alright, so we are in... let's go to rotation mode. It's like kind of low-key not rotating. There we go, finally. Now back to linear. Rotate, linear. Alright, so what I'm trying to do is use my RCS to thrust towards the asteroid. Uh, as best as I can. All right, back to linear. I want to get my center of thrust towards it. And it's kind of not working. All right, let's go back to staging. There we go. What are you what are you even staging? Game, what are you staging? All right, so now I'm pointing at it and I'm thrusting towards it, and I'm trying to adjust my trajectory a little bit with the RCS. Good. And then I'll blast towards it. As you can see, the RCS is pushing me forward, and I would say maybe two meters per second or so is good. ETA to crash is, <coughs> excuse me, coming, coming quick. Come on, Bruce Willis. Control this beast. Alright, it's coming into view here. I am... Alright, I don't have that much time to spare, because 
Kerbin is coming fast appro approaching. So let me just uh, blast towards it. It's really one of these, like, I'm only going to have one shot. So three miles an hour approach, or two and a half. I'm trying to adjust my trajectories and all that. My lights are illuminating it. Oop, no, I didn't mean to be on rotation. Come on. Alright, it's centered up. I'm pushing basically straight at it. I have T minus one minute. This is going to be a crash and burn, I think. One chance here. Alright, uh, as suspected, the stupid breaking grounds parts don't work. Uh, the grabber arm grabbed it and then just kind of flung it, yeeted it, let let it go. Uh, so, honestly, my frustration is palpable with the Breaking Grounds mod. This is yet again another time where it simply does not operate the way I think it should. Um, I am referencing, of course, to the experiment controls. So, yeah, what we could do is follow this asteroid down, I suppose. Um, and watch it burn up in atmosphere. Watch our probe burn up in atmosphere, more like. I decided to go full burn there. Alright, catastrophic failure. Yeah, I kind of know. Uh, back to the tracking station. Cool, thanks. Catastrophic failure. Uh, so normally, what happens is, you, you might have saw very, very briefly. Uh, let's terminate that. There's no crew in that. Refuel. I can terminate these. min -miss relay, I'll leave up. Stop tracking that object. Um, what you might have been able to see there is, um, very briefly, what ended up happening was, um, there was a, the, the grabber arm sort of low-key grabbed it, and then just sort of, like, let it go. Uh, normally what would have happened, or what should have happened is it should have glued it, so to speak. Uh, so now what I'm doing is checking some of these other asteroids. These are teeny asteroids that um, that are going to intercept uh, oops, Kerbin sometime in the near future uh, to see if I can't grab myself a teeny one. Yeah, so this asteroid here has a... What is this? Uh, an okay... It's, it's, it's okay to grab. Uh, but what I'm going to probably do instead is zip towards my transfer window for Duna and check on my Moho Rider. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, my asteroid grabbing mission, Bruce Willis failed and the ending of Armageddon was Armageddon. Why have a title like Armageddon if it's not going to end up Armageddoning? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so this 17 and 17.5 are going to be... Uh, orbiting, let's turn all these on. Orbiting Ike and Duna alike. And then, um, RHD-18, which was supposed to be the Moho run, uh, lost connection with everything. The way I'm going to do this is wait for its Apo, and then burn to sort of get back to Kerbin. Uh, so let's go and, um... Calculate the transfer window for Duna. 
back to Kerbin and then get these uh, get these guys home. Now that that asteroid mission has catastrophically failed. So a Duna to a Kerbin. Plot it. Our best bet is year 11. Oops. Year 11, day... Uh, what was this? 406? Wow, that is some time in the future. Uh, okay. Well, 11406. Uh, back to the tracking station, and we are going to warp time considerably. So all the asteroids I'm tracking are going to be moot because they are going to be long uh, past by the time 11406 comes around. And a whole new set of unknowns are going to be uh, available to track and pass and so on and so forth. So we're just passing time now. Uh, another thing I could do is RHD18 looks to be, yeah, just around there, Apo. Uh, while we accelerate time, let's keep an eye on them to see if uh, we might be able to help in some way. What I'm planning on doing is trying, when it gets to the Apo, is to put it on a, a slightly less elliptical course. But we'll see. It also might be able to pick up some signals from the solar, solar observatory. Because uh, it's rendezvousing with that somewhat close. Alright, let's see. Let's fly that uh, that stranded pilot that doesn't need food, water, air, anything. Alright, so we have no data for now. Let's see as we approach the solar observatory if this changes. I don't think, given the really weak uh, antenna that this thing has, it's going to have any chance of being controllable. But you never know. No, it really doesn't. All right. That's fine. It's controllable. It's just not maneuverable or whatever. So whatever I do to this ship here, uh, I'm going to need to do without maneuvering or without nodes or anything so let's fix some of this because as you can see here I can't add maneuvers or anything totally fine flying blind I broke the nose cone a little bit No, not retrograde, that's not what I meant. There we go. Burn around here. Uh, you know what, this is the Ascension node. I'm not gonna be able to see this Ascension node, am I? Because lack of maneuvering. trying to flatten out its or uh, circularize its orbit around the Sun uh, we have plenty of fuel left the Taos attempting to make a trip back home I don't have any hidden antennae on here do I No. yeah I don't I don't have uh, any sort of connection to anything here Nope, no hidden antennae as far as I can tell.
had I had an antenna, I might actually be able to connect the to the solar observatory. All right, I have about six k delta v left to get me home. A little bit more blasting, and then I can try to figure out a transfer burn. I just don't want it to collide with Eve. Okay. Uh, now, 11406. I'm staying focused on this craft in case it ever picks up data. But my guess is, if it does pick up data, I'm not going to be able to see it. Uh, let me stop tracking unknown objects so I can actually see Kerbin. Now, Kerbin is moving slow. Whoa, whoa, I didn't mean to hit M. Slower in relation to RHD-18. So RHD-18 will eventually catch it on this path. Uh, so she might be in space for, I don't, I don't know, another 20 years or something, but... It's possible that she gets back to Kerbin. I could also alternatively fly a rescue mission too, but she might be able to rescue herself. Just this week, uh, SpaceX announced that they might be looking into um, thermonuclear engines, if I recall correctly from the news article about trying to get to Mars faster. Because a huge part of getting to Mars is that you need to provision a trip for the long, multi many months journey. And uh, if we had better propulsion systems, we could cut the uh, travel time down a lot, uh, which would um, allow us to have, pack more fuel and pack less food, so to, so to speak. And then the, the trip itself would be a little bit more comfortable because you're not sitting in a capsule. I mean, that's really the issue is when you're going to the moon, you're, you're, you're going to spend like two, three days, right? When you go to Mars, you're spending months. So for two, three days, you could sit in a teeny little seat or whatever and have a, a very limited amount of movement uh, in a, a small capsule. But if you're there for months, um, the amount of atrophy that your body is going to sustain... Uh, for the duration of your, um, you know, for the duration of your your stay or whatever, your, your waiting, um, means that you'll get to Mars and you'll just be like a, a bag of bones. So it is really, really important to try to figure out how to cut that time down. So 11406 is, I believe, what I calculated here. Uh, we, uh, let's recalculate just to make sure. Duna to Kerbin. Plot it. Well, this is for this planning window. Uh, let me switch back to the other crafts. So, uh, the fastest way to do that is to highlight them. I don't see them. Am I just not tracking them? There we go. So we have RHD 17 and 17.5. Switch to them and make sure that we're not overshooting our transfer. That'd be bad. It only comes around every few years. So, Duna to Kerbin, plot it. Uh, yep. So ideally, it's less if we go later, but there is a, a window coming up in 100 days that is fine. Uh, it's still 11406-ish. As you can see, these blue targets here. So 11400 or so. All right. Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to accelerate time uh, looking at that craft, though, because 
uh, it's on a low orbit and it will time prohibit me from accelerating too fast. All right, so 11, 400, about 95 five days out. All right, we are at 11,400. Let's go back and do 17 first. Do I, what do I have here? I've got a heat shield, perfect. All right, that should make re-entry easy. So, uh, the ejection angle. Uh, let me look that up real quick. Uh, let's see about Getting home. All right, so the ejection angle, Duna to Kerbin. I've done this once before, I just don't recall off the top of my head. Is from Duna, it's about 121 degrees past. So let me zoom out. It will be, the ejection angle will be roughly here-ish. Now, oh, looks like we're getting some Ike interference, but let's take a look at this maneuver. I honestly can't even see it. All right, there's that, that maneuver got all sorts of angled. Let me fix that. Add maneuver, just eject. I think it's getting angled because of Ike. Yeah. We're getting a weird slingshot effect because of Ike. So what I'm going to do is accelerate time because uh, the window is really in a few days. So I'm going to wait for Ike to be in a different um, uh, a different part of its uh, orbit. So what I'll do is go to the editor and add a few orbits to this. All right, there we go. That's a lot nicer. Setting Kerbin as a target. As you can see, there is a little bit of a close approach there. Uh, then let's go over to Kerbin and oh, it's not a close enough approach to. Okay, uh, let's go to the editor and try to tweak this approach to get us closer. Okay, we had an intercept there. There it is. Whoop. Gone, it went. All right, now let's lower the sensitivity and try to fix this so that it uh, puts us into a reasonable orbit. What I might need to do is do the burn and do, do some adjustments later. Because I'm finding it mostly because of the axis. Very difficult to actually get anything closer than this. Um, Alright. Going to go and warp to that maneuver. So it's not this, uh, wow, we're going to have to orbit a bit. I wish I could warp faster, but I can't. Uh, you know what I could do? Actually, let's cancel warping. Is uh, flatten out. Let's just create Ike as a target. Flatten out our, um, our ascending, because we're right now we're in a weird 
kind of awfully elliptical orbit, and that's going to make it hard to hit our target. So we'll fix that a bit now. And then next path, I should be able to do a transfer that is a little bit more sensical. All right. Oops. That's not the key I meant to do. your parking orbit is all sorts of weird it's going to be hard for you to do the proper ejections all right so that it looks a little bit better let me zoom out zoom back in getting a frame of reference this will be our burn here and We're setting Kerbin as a target. All right, let's look over at Kerbin. Oops, do that again. Gilly, Kerbin. All right, I would say that that's a lot better now. Uh, so let's adjust this so that it's even closer. Oh, look at that. Polar, but I can fix that. Ooh, look. Looking nice, right? I know you think so. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. If I could get it, there's no way I'm going to be able to make that burn exactly, but uh, if I could get it close, that'd be pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. So I'll try. Start burn in half an hour. Let's uh, look back at our ship. So it is this pass. <laughs> Looks like I'm burning straight to Ike, but of course Ike is going to be over here by the time I, uh, I get to its current position. T minus node in, okay. Start burn, done. Let's try to do this as accurately as possible. Uh, looks like we won't be staging for this. I have a lot of parachutes that need repacking before I do re-entry, so I'll have to consider that as well. How good was that? Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I knew I wasn't going to get exactly where I wanted to go, but that's pretty good. Uh, so next up, uh, 17's mission. So let's go back to... Or 17.5's mission. So let's switch to 17.5. And let's see if we can't um, go straight from here following the same sort of path, actually. I'm curious uh, if I can just not even plot it. Alright, so let's take a look. Is this at all possible? Yeah, it is. It is indeed. So I'm going to need to burn a little bit later, I think. Alright, 
I have some sort of encounter here. Let me go take oh, take a look. I don't see the encounter. What am I encountering? I'm really not sure. Alright, so that's sort of the same... Alright, let's go the same sort of trajectory. And... Punch it a little bit more with gas. Oh, there we go. It says Kerbin Encounter, uh, but where is the encounter? I don't see it. I really plainly do not see it. Uh, hmm. Uh, something wonky is going on. Well, it says I'm encountering, but of that I'm not so sure, just because it's not showing me any such encounters. Uh, I think, again, this is a case of my orbit is a little oddly elliptical, maybe, perhaps. So let's... Uh, no, it's pretty flat. It's pretty flat. So I am just going to take a big chance here. And I'm just going to blast mimicking the trajectory of uh, the other exit, the other return. And then hope for an encounter. Um, let me just let me just see here. It says I'm encountering. I think it's just that I'm switching too many sphere of influences. So it really can't calculate uh, exactly the encounter. Uh, but once I exit Ike, uh, it might work. It might. Might not. Taking a risk. Alright, so let's warp to next maneuver. Which is coming up. Everything's a fun experiment, right? All right, warp to the burn. Oop, overshoot the burn. This one has a little bit more fuel than the other one, which is why I'm a little cavalier about the uh, re-entry. So I can make corrections when I need to. And then after this mission, what I'm going to do is build a very standard asteroid grabber for a teeny asteroid and just grab it the very boring way and not using the crazy robotics because I'm not entirely certain the robotics works. I've done a lot of asteroid grabs and uh, having it grab and let go is not something I normally see. Uh, I think that has everything to do with the... DLC. All right, close enough. Accelerate time so that we exit Duna Sphere of Influence, and then I can make any correction burns here. So here we go. Now I can actually see my periaps. Uh, so if I look over at uh, Kerbin, I've got, I've actually got a really reasonable periaps. Uh, one way better than I thought it would have. So let's do some correcting. Uh, in one hour, uh, let's go look at E or Kerbin while we do this. In one hour, we'll do a corrective burn. I don't really care which way I rotate around Kerbin. Just a low periaps is what I'm aiming for, and maybe one that's not so odd. 
That looks good to me. Good enough. Okay. Warp to that maneuver. And then I'll correct the uh, other one as well. This is a very teeny burn. So what I'm going to do is uh, shut down my side engines. And thrust limit my main engine. And he is a good pilot. Meaning he's able to maneuver to the maneuvering node. Uh, but I'm out of electric charge, aren't I? So what is it? One? Zero? What did I bind this to? I'll just right click to extend. Got to get that electric charge. So we can boogie woogie. There we go. Guess I could have used RCS. Zero. All right. Uh, now let's go focus on Kerbin. Oh, yes. That looks righteous to me. Oh, yeah. That is a fantastic periaps. All right. Uh, switching back to our craft here. Let's switch over to the other one. Wherever the other one is, here it is, RHD-17, switch to. And do the adjustments likewise over here so that we can get a very nice periaps. Alright, so sometime in the future, add a maneuver in 20 minutes. Alright, that works. Let's go take a look at uh, Kerbin. And adjust this. Hmm. I'm not seeing that any of my... Oh, there we go. Alright, so 10 meter per second change. That is... Let's not bump it. I'd like to aim to land uh, as best as I can on Kerbin, so there's our maneuver now. Warp to next maneuver. Because, yeah, uh, I think just trying to land on Kerbin is a really nice goal for yourself. It's good practice. Especially when uh, you're trying to land on a planet that's, you know, not Kerbin, and, uh, and uh, you're trying to land somewhere specific. All right, so we're thrust limited. Let's actually take a look at what that gave us. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, that will work for me. Uh, now, before I forget, let's EVA Bill here and have him repack the, um, the top shoots. We're going to want those, uh, oh, uh, all right. So actually what I'm going to do is he is not high enough level to do it, but, uh, what we could do is have him level up in the, uh, no connection. Okay. Uh, well, he's not the only engineer here. Pilot. No, he is the only engineer here. Come on. Really? Uh, all right. So he can, we have to wait 
until we're about to smash into uh, Kerbin for him to level up. Because he doesn't have... Uh, he doesn't have um, the ability... Because normally the, the research labs allow you to level up. Uh, but the issue is we don't have a connection to Kerbin. So once we get a connection to Kerbin, we'll be able to level up. It's kind of funny. Alright, I'm take also keeping a watch of RHD-18 versus Kerbin. RHD-18 should be catching up soon. And then once it catches up pretty close, I can do a transfer burn to get them uh, intercepting. So we'll be able to repack the shoots once we're like... Uh, once we do a, uh, a reorbiting burn, a retrograde burn to uh, not escape Kerbin. In fact, uh, we should have antenna access pretty soon here. Because we're getting close. Alright, so we have antenna access. So what I'll do is go into the, this, level up crew. And then Bill here is now level 3, not a level 1. So I'm repacking all the shoots that I'm going to need to land on Kerbin. And look at you floating around. I probably have enough fuel to do a uh, engine break, but uh, I designed these crafts not to need to do that. Alright, so all the important shoots are now repacked. And we reboarded, and let's warp to... We're getting there before RHD-17-5, so... I will focus on this one first. You guys are getting an extra long uh, episode here, aren't you? Alright, a periaps burn. We will... Circularize. The only reason I'm circularizing is I'd really like to try to land it nice. So, warp to next maneuver. Put these shoots on a different stage. Maybe at the top stage. Oh, the, my pilot, uh, Valentina, leveled up enough to do maneuvering burns. Phenomenal. Why did I... Oh, I think I changed... No, what's going on here? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know what's going on. I don't have my engines on, do I? Activate. Activate. Don't thrust limit. There we go. Now start burn in 20 seconds. You thought I had forgotten. I hadn't. Welcome home, crew. Quite the journey you've been on. Four year, almost pushing five year journey to Duna and back. There's Kerbal Space Center, right there. I'm going to actually overburn past the maneuver here. Just to get my apo, or my periaps, low. Let's get rid of all maneuvers and then add this one. Good. Warp to next maneuver. 
angle towards the maneuver. And RHD 17.5 is still a little ways back, so we'll have plenty of time to do this. Well, that flipped on a dime. And then next pass over Kerbal Space Center, I will uh, attempt an aerobrake land. Right, that looks good. Or maybe not during nighttime? I don't know. Dusk landing, perhaps? Yeah, maybe not during nighttime. So we'll let the clock roll out a little bit longer. Uh, there was probably enough daylight to have done it. All right, let's go to the Space Center and warp to next morning. It's probably the faster way to do it. Let's see. Anything here? Oh, I will take in Class A into orbit. Nothing else interests me. So, tracking station. Warp to next morning. And fly the RHD-17. Figure out, I'm gonna need to do one more lap. Checking for, yep. 17.5 is still a ways away. All right, start burning retrograde here. Stage off the side tanks. And. Burn off some of our uh, horizontal so that we can actually land this baby. Gonna do a quick maneuver, figure out how to go up. So, up is this way. Alright. Might have killed off too much of my velocity here. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's point retrograde and come in for the re-entry. Maybe uh, adjusting the uh, parachutes for a Kerbin landing rather than um, rather than. Uh, a MUN landing. Putting these parachutes at probably 2,000 is safer. I'll do 1,500, split the difference. And the drogue chutes can deploy at 5,000, that's fine. Now I do have a heat shield uh, that is underneath this engine, but uh, I'll keep the engine if I can. Now this uh, Hound engine has really, really terrible thrust in thick atmel. So it's not going to be able to do very much here. Drogue shoots, produce drag, slow me down. I don't actually know how heavy 
Oh, I'm out of fuel, huh? I don't know how heavy uh, this craft is with the um, drogues and all that. So we might actually have to separate this anyway. But I would say that's a pretty good arrow brick landing. It's one of the better ones I've had. Alright, so we slow down to... Maybe slow enough to save this uh, engine? Maybe not? I don't know. I don't know. That engine might be a little bit too heavy. But we'll try it anyway. If it breaks, it breaks. As long as we don't Leaning Tower of Pisa smash. And look at all these happy little uh, Kerbals coming back home. Seen their Kerbal families. Gonna eat some normal Kerbal food. Gonna breathe some Kerbal air. Nope. A little too fast. That's helpful information to have for when Jeb lands. Recover the vessel. And... And... Come on. Don't leave me hanging here. Boom. Almost 1,500 science earned. 97.6% refund value. And all these beautiful people ready for redeployment. All this additional science... Uh, let's do um, advanced unmanned tech. Uh, specialized electrics. And we're going to wait for some more science from the Jebmobile. Again, I know this one's running a little long, but uh, there was a lot I wanted to do. All right, so let's land RHD 17.5 quickly. Hundred days out. All right, doing a warp here so I don't warp past it because I've been known to warp right past uh, the transfer burns. It's no, no bueno when you do. Or the intercepts, rather. Now, I'm not that worried about the cache, so I'm going to focus on just the landing. I will try to land close to Kerbal Space Center, but uh, I'm not going to do the whole orbiting thing. I'm just going to go for a hard splashdown. Okay, let's warp to here. Five hours in the future, so I can actually aim where I'm coming down. I already have antenna access, cool. Gonna probably retract these bad boys. So I can get refunded. Alright. So where is Kerbal Space Center? It is totally on the other side. All right, fine. Let's add a maneuver to circularize, sort of, not exactly. All right, warp to next maneuver. Now I'm uh, entering the atmosphere the other direction. This is, uh, you know, clockwise versus counterclockwise, as you can see the station's going the other way. Uh, another thing I'm going to need to do is turn on these bad boys. So that I can actually launch. And then we're 
we're aiming for very hard to see Kerbal Space Center here. Because it's in the dark, but it's right there. I wonder if this whole craft could land. I'll try. Probably doesn't have enough parachutes, but I'll try. So why not? There should be some sort of like mass to parachute calculator. I'm sure there is, I just, uh, I don't usually use a lot of mods. Okay. Accelerate time. Uh, that looks pretty good. Point retrograde. And it's going to be a nighttime landing. I want to adjust so that I'm aiming over. So let's go to the maneuver node. And then retrograde again. Jeb's having a fun time with these RCS. And no, it's not much to look at because it's nighttime landing. And this is the last little bit of fuel I've got. And we'll be landing close-ish. That's all that matters. We're about to enter Atmo. I don't know how easily you could see it, but Kerbal Space Center is right there where my cursor is. We're definitely flying beyond it. But here we are in atmosphere now. Coming in a little hot, but not too, too hot. Still got all the heat shields and stuff. I think the engine overheated and therefore is inoperable. So I'm going to point retrograde and see if I can't keep this intact. I, of course, have a heat shield between me and the dangerous bits. Full complement of parachutes. Let's hope they produce enough drag to keep this ship intact. I'll even jokingly put, now. Nah, I won't bother with that. All right, so we have enough for, um, oh, I'm out of oxidizer. Oh, I'm out of fuel entirely, okay. Uh, so we don't have enough to keep these side chutes or the side tanks, uh, we're a little overweight, but actually as we, no, we're pretty close to the ground here. Uh, let's break the lander legs to try to break our fall. 
and see if they'll do. Because if they're the first things to connect... Oh yeah! Oh daddy! No, 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 no! Alright, before it tipped, I just recovered. So it's like, nothing ever happened, right? Um, I like how the RCS was like, we're trying, we're trying. I kind of landed that. Kind of. All right. Uh, there we go. So, 1,200 science. Um, uh, 97% refund. And Jeb's even better at his job. Uh, this additional science is going to allow us to unlock experimental electrics. And... Maybe automation or metamaterials. Ah, well, let's do automation. Cool. So we're just about done with the tech tree here. Uh, yeah. So I apologize for the asteroid grabbing mission. Um, I'm honestly going to blame that one on uh, breaking ground and the robotic parts and all that. But I'll try to get an A class at least. If there's any other things that you want to see before the end of this series, drop me a line. And I do hope that you tune in next time. Thanks for all the viewers that are still watching this series. And I'll catch you all later. Adios.